All right, let's talk a little more about commutators. So first of all, let's recall the definition um, just because definitions are really important and this is a new one. So we're gonna do the more general one, A and B normal subgroups of G, then A comma B is equal to the group generated by elements of the form A, B, A inverse, B inverse, where A is in A, and B is in B. And then the commutator subgroup is DG, which is just G comma G. So this is things of the form A, B, A inverse, B inverse, where A and B belong to G. Um, and of course, we proved last time that this is always a normal subgroup of the, of the group in question, so in particular, dg is normal in g. Okay, so let's see here. Definition. We'll set d0 of g as just dg. Um, and for all natural numbers n, that is n greater, integers n greater than or equal to 1, because I'm an analyst and I prefer that notation. We will have d to the n g be just d of um, g, no, d of d to the n minus 1 g. So d0 is just applying d1 time, and dn is applying d n plus 1 times, unless I'm off by 1 there. Um, but yeah, and so we know, of course, that um, dn minus 1, no, dn is going to be a normal subgroup of dn minus 1 just from our previous result, which I did not write up here, but which I wrote last time. So anyways, um, so let's talk about solvable groups. G is solvable if there exists an n such that um, d to the n g is trivial. So taking d of g gives you a subgroup, and if you keep getting subgroups and eventually get to the identity, then it's trivial. So let's make some observations. So um, what's an example of a solvable group which groups are really solvable and which groups are really not solvable? Um, so let G be simple and non-abelian. Okay, then what is D of G? D of G, well, it's a, we know it's a normal subgroup of G and g is simple, so it's either going to be all of g or if it's going to be trivial. Um, if the commutator subgroup is trivial, then somehow that's impossible because of non-abelianity. Oh, yeah, we're going to prove later on that, oh wait, no. Yeah, so, yeah, we're going to prove later on that if um, if d of g is the identity, then it's abelian. And that's actually an if and only if. So d of g is the identity if and only if g is abelian. So the fact that g is not abelian means that d of g is not e. And so if it's trivial, but it's not e, then it has to be g. Let's see here. So then by induction, we can see that d the n g equals g for all n integers greater than or equal to zero. So simple, non-abelian simple groups are very much not solvable because we're never going to get to the identity. In fact, we're never even going to get to anything smaller than g. Uh, oh, by the way, the reason we call this solvable is apparently because of Galois theory. Uh, we're not going to get to Galois theory in this course, so... If you find Galois theory interesting, then sorry. But anyways, so we have this. Um, let's see, where are we at time-wise? 
I'm only five minutes in. Okay, so we have this. Okay. Oh, um, see here. All abelian groups are solvable since D one G is just the identity. Is it D one G or D zero G? Oh no, no, I wrote this wrong. I wrote this wrong. Yeah, I'm sorry. The D zero G is just G. So D zero G is just not applying D at all. Um, and so D and so yeah, this makes sense because D one G is just D of G. Okay, yeah, there we go. And then D N G is just applying D n times. Okay, so I was off by one, but because I had written it down wrong. Okay, so anyways, uh, D one of G. So that's just D of G is E. And why is that? That should be very very easy to see. Oh, because if if this is if this is the identity, then for any a so check this out. So if um if dg is trivial, then that means any element of the form a b a inverse b inverse where a and b are in g, this is going to be in um dg, which is e. But now multiply on the right by b and then on the right by a, and we're going to get ab equals b a. And so that this is this is actually if you're wondering like okay so this a b a inverse b inverse thing, why did people come up with it? How does it have any use? And this is kind of where it came from, I think, or at least this is a really important motivation. Like you can see how this a b a inverse b inverse thing might actually be useful. It's because um, if this is always whenever this is trivial, we have a b equals b a. So it sort of has that link to abelianity. So that's why certainly um, the um, the commutator subgroup of any abelian group is trivial. Okay. Also, um, DG is okay. So that tells us that abelian groups are very much not abelian groups are very much solvable because you solve them just by taking the commutator subgroup. And that's all it takes. Um, so anyways, um, this implies that um, if dg equals e, then g is abelian. And so what that means is that there is an if and only if relationship between um, abelian groups and groups whose commutator subgroups are trivial. I.e., your, su your commutator subgroup is trivial if and only if you are an abelian group. And so to prove this, um, this follows, again, I'm going to return to uh, homework set one um, and use a fact from there and then prove it. This follows from the fact, which I will prove, that um, G modded, um, if you take G, okay, so we know the commutator subgroup. We proved last time the commutator subgroup is normal in G, so you can quotient out by it. It turns out if you quotient out by this, it's abelian. And that's always true, regardless of if G is abelian or if G is just some, and, and for any group G, you take G and you mod out by its commutator subgroup, you'll get an abelian group. And so in particular, if it happens to be the case that DG is trivial, then what that means is that if you mod out by D, you take G mod out by DG, that's just G mod E, and so that's just G. And so this says precisely that G is abelian. So let's prove this. Um, to prove this, let um, G one H 
G1 DG and G2 DG be elements of the quotient G mod DG. Then G1 inverse, G2 inverse, G1, G2 is in DG. Right, because uh, for these to be in G mod DG, that means G1 and G2 are both contained in G. And so G1 inverse and G2 inverse are contained in G. And so then uh, this is one of the commutator subgroup elements. In fact, this is, yeah. So, so th that's in there. So if this is in there, then that means that if we take G1 inverse, G2 inverse, G1, G2, and we consider this coset, so multiplying that by DG, this is going to be equal to DG. And then if you, um, so what is this multiplication? How can we view this as multiplication in, um, in G mod DG. That means that G1 inverse DG times G2 inverse DG times G1 DG times G2 DG. That's going to equal DG or E times DG. I'll write it for no reason. So multiply on the right, multiply on the left by G1 inverse DG, and then by G2 inverse DG, what we're gonna get is G1 DG times G2 DG is equal to, well, G2 DG times G1 DG, okay? And here we go, hence, G mod DG is abelian. Because we've proven that any two elements commute. And that shows us that we have um, uh, DG equals E if and only if G is abelian. Okay, so that's neat. All right, let's take an example. Um, let's look at a, B, C, this, well, these, this matrix, collection of matrices of this form, B is complex, A and C are non-zero and complex. I think we've looked at this before. I've definitely looked at it in class. Um, it's possible that every time this has come up as an example, I've skipped over it in my videos because I typically don't like looking at examples. But anyways, uh, this, is, this is a group. B is solvable. Um, why is that? You can prove that D one B is just matrices of the form one X zero one, where X is complex, and then D two. B, which is just D of this, which is, let's see, that's going to be just the identity matrix. And let's see here, this one sort of makes sense because look at this, you can easily see that this is going to be abelian. And so abelianity holds if and only if its commutator subgroup is trivial. And so we get this. So the only thing that's tricky is uh, you have to prove that this is a commutator subgroup of this. And apparently that's not tricky to prove. I haven't worked through it myself. It's going to be one of the homework assignments. So presumably at s someday in the future, I'll have uploaded a video in which I prove that this is, um, that the commutator of this is this. But um, yeah, I currently do not have a proof to present to you, but it should be a really good exercise in um, learning about solvable groups. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for this introduction. And so we'll continue from here to talk about solvable groups and 
gather some facts about these things.